Your boy Biscuits, I'm having back another video, and that's something I say very sparingly. Uh, it's already for me to apologize for the lack of consistent videos because it's not going to get much better. But um, this is a topic pretty near and dear to my heart. So Fortnite, which was, in my opinion, the most fun game to watch for virtually the entirety of late 2017 to late 2018, um, has become the Travis Scott of games, it's become a platform for promoting things that may be in entirely different gaming genres, if not entirely different industries entirely. And with that ever expanding outlook, things like Marvel and um you know like just like crazy things off of that. Like I mean to me like one of the most fun things I've ever played when it came to collaboration or outside of the normal realm of a game was when Thanos was in uh Marvel for I believe Infinity War three years ago. He was just so busted. He was just fun. He was just unusual. He had like lasers, uh and they try to make him like, you know, kinda balanced, but that was just incredibly fun. I know they've done like ton of collabs since then. I just can't remember all like John Wick and stuff like that. Um and I haven't played pretty much since 2018, but the meme that always got to me was the anime memes. Uh, they'd had a ton of Naruto, Dragon Ball, uh, you know, and then even other cartoons that have been rumored, I guess, or just, you know, like, mocked, so to speak. But Naruto and Dragon Ball was big themes. And if you know me, uh, I'm a huge Shonen fan, um, specifically Naruto, Dragon Ball, Bleach, the big three uh sans one piece uh just all of the 2000s greats and you know come to find out naruto has been on a pretty good big decline when it came to gaming as of late and you know they have been getting Boruto up off the ground in terms of his re reputation uh as of late and it's going to come up some fire maybe a good naruto game can come again one day the worst part is that Naruto games were so good in 2000, and it didn't necessarily have to just be CyberConnect 2. I mean, they had, um, I'm not saying all these were, like, not made with CyberConnect 2. I don't know all the studio developers. But, uh, Uzumaki Chronicles, Ultimate Ninja Storm, Ultimate, well, that was, like, 2010. But Ultimate Ninja, uh, Clash of, I think, Ninja, uh, I want to say Rise of Ninja, uh, and then the, the, um, the the Xbox series, uh, like Bonds, like Bond, it was, it was something Bonds. Um, and they had the the PSP uh, Ultimate Ninja games. Um, they had, they had quite a few. Now I'm now just blanking on because it's been almost twenty years now since some of those games came out. Um, I feel so old every day. Um. But it was like it was like preeminent. Like it was, you know, Dragon Ball's coming on fire too. But like Naruto was honing it down for anime along with the Dragon Ball, and it's just cool to get this like kind of circulate because a lot of people think like I want. I'll, I'll get to the real section, the real reason me making this video, uh, speaking to people that feel like this collaboration like lessens the Naruto franchise and makes it like memeified now. I mean, I don't understand why that's the case. Like a the people who are consuming that are more casual Naruto fans. Like I feel like it's gonna be hardcore fans who also go out to do this. But most of the people who are going to be doing the Naruto running or doing the hands, because I feel like if they do um, some of their taunts, which is a big part of the kind of cash that comes with these collaborations, the taunts, the skins, and then maybe like just external like goodies and stuff. One big thing is going to be the taunts. I feel like one of them. I already. I thought about this like two days ago. I feel like hand signals, um, Naruto doing the believe it, uh, the thousand years of death, uh, Naruto kind of cross armed, and then maybe Sasuke. You know when he like is about to do Amaterasu and puts like one hand over his eye. I feel like those are some like the bigger ideas I could see being the taunts. So when you see, because they already have Naruto running apparently. Um, quote unquote, Naruto running. So, 
when you see that, I mean, that's people that uh, consume this stuff through a, a media meme sense. Like, people who don't even watch wrestling but can identify an RKO. Or, like, don't know what Jeff Hardy's doing nowadays, but always know like, when his music comes on. Sometimes things that seem like they should be upheld or gatekeep, gatekept, uh, become bigger than that franchise. And I think Naruto is one of those, you know, rare pieces of niche media that has clearly transcended uh, the boundaries of its space. As though, you know, just to say the anime is pretty much ever increasing from, you know, day to day, second to second. Anime is not niche anymore for the most part, but, you know, some of the things that make Naruto cool or very uncool at a point in time. I think it's well I think it's what a lot of people are coming from. A lot of people see, you know, this mainstream thing that is I guess kind of cringe out of some, you know, anti, you know, counterculture individuals. Um and I see how hype Fortnite is and it's like, oh, you know, I grew up where Naruto was considered lame and this and that and now it's gonna be like kind of hoard for, you know, some money, a collaboration. Uh people do their fucking Fortnite dances and all that with it and all that. But I think I think it adds a lot to the franchise to as flowers be given. And that's really how I look at it. I look at this as a franchise that introduced many people, including me, via gaming. I I mean I watched Naruto, you know, and Dragon Ball when it was on Toonami, which a lot of people don't know Toonami was on Cartoon Network if you're a certain age. But it came on the Cartoon Network. Um, that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, they had the uh, the the Friday night anime block. I forgot what that Friday night uh, block was called. But they had like a Cartoon Network that Friday night block uh, that would lead into Toonami. It was on Adult Swim as well. Um, and Naruto would be on there. Dragon Ball would be on there. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it was cool. I mean, it was cool. But like the games... I'm, I was a big gamer when I came up. Like, I was huge into cartoons and stuff like that, too. Like, I was a big gamer. And things that could be done on games made me closer to the content. Like, there's a lot of the Dragon Ball lore that I only know because of the video games. Because of how in-depth those video game levels went. And there's a lot about... There's a lot of sub-characters in the Naruto franchise that I know more about because of the games than I do about the series. Because I didn't watch... Like, like I watched the Naruto filler if it was, like, just on. I was just on watching it. But, like... For the most part, like, I didn't, like, go out my way to watch Naruto or Filler. And, like, I never, I pretty much never watched Shippuden Filler. Like, I think I'd, I've probably consumed most of Shippuden through a combination of the, 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 um, the fourth Ninja World War I pretty much exclusively read. And I've seen some of the big fights. Um, I watched the first, the Gara Datara arc, I watched that. But I read that first, I'm pretty sure. And then I played a good chunk of it. Uh, there was Storm 2 and Storm... Well, really Storm 2. Uh, the Pretty much the Itachi, Sasuke, Naruto, like, five Kage. I played that. So it's like a combination. And and having these thorough Naruto games that were really underrated. Like, Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 was a fun-ass fighter. Like maybe the biggest anime fighter... Um, until Dragon Ball Fighters came along. Like, I'm not even, like, it was the preeminent arena fighter for a while, and the Naruto fighter uh, for a while as well, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, Storm Force does, like, longevity to this point. It came out five years ago now. Um, almost six years ago, actually. And, uh, you know, I just think it's, I just think it's giving his flowers. Now, to speak to another point, um, this one's a bit more insidious than, I guess, it's financially uh, driven. Collaboration. Collaboration is pretty much the new uh, revival series, franchise revival. Uh, you had, re we had like, not remasters, but uh, reboots. We had reboots in like kind of mid-2010s, but now it's to revive a franchise, even if it's not even a series, like a TV series, anything like that, just a brand. Collaboration is huge. Uh, I think that article said they had Dune. Yeah, they had Dune in, in Fortnite. Uh, Balenciaga was in Fortnite. Balenciaga class for everybody these days. Justice League, you know, Marvel. Uh, they've had concerts, you know. Um, Travis Scott, Ariana Grande. Um, apparently I've had cause collaborations. I mean, it's 
collaboration is a way to both raise your awareness to a very uh you know unaware audience. I mean, a lot of people that are playing that stuff, you know, they don't they don't really know fashion period, but they do know when they were you know ten eleven years old. You know, Balenciaga was cool because Balenciaga had you know the dad shoes when I was looking for my Fortnite skins. So they come up, you know, a couple years later when they can spend their own money, or maybe you know get some of my parents' money. They say, "I want Balenciagas," or "I want Gucci," because I saw it in Fortnite. It's about brand placement and brand positioning. If you haven't had a marketing class in your life, I recommend taking one because it would definitely help you in this concept. And then even with fashion right now, I mean, Balenciaga and the Simpsons, uh, Fendi and Versace collabed. I think, yeah, Gucci and Balenciaga collabed. I mean, the idea of collaboration was fucking impossible to get off in some of these uh, clothing brands, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, you know, like, LB and Off-White get to exist in the same realm, you know, with Virgil's a connecting piece. I mean, like, lines are intentionally like being blurred at this point like it's actual value to blur though to, to just not have to have inter interoperability uh i mean you kind of can see that with the price of the internet and your know, globalism you have slang from let's say britain becoming commonplace in america like borders do not exist anymore and i feel like you know people are mad about it this this lane, clothing, video games, this kind of zeitgeist of the culture that we have nowadays, was actually one of the last ones that really break through. Like you had music that had, you know, your uh, Jay-Z and Lincoln Parks, um, you know, Kanye and uh, Daft Punk. Like, music had this intersectionality decades before we got to this point. Uh, you know, even like, I think Run DMC, they worked with some... Um, rock bands back in the day like fashion was mad late and gaming there was I, there's there's some faint notions in my head of like companies gaming companies trying to work to this reality before fortnite but fortnite's just been this platform for for this um and even if fortnite you know came on like 2017 i mean it's like 2017, they're just getting to this game that existed for, you know, decades in other realms. Um, I really say de decades, but like, I mean, Nike, Kanye was the first one to get a uh, an exclusive shoe from Nike that that's not an athlete, and that was like what 20, 2008. So I guess I'm not too too late, but that's still about ten years, which is a a millennium. And when it comes to shit like fashion and, and uh, games and, uh, and uh, you know, all that goes along with that. But so let's say to kind of close this out, give a kind of third act to it. I don't think it's bad for Naruto to have a Fortnite. I know that Naruto has had his hits in terms of reputation since the Kaguya uh, revelation, what, five years ago now? Um, and, you know, at, at times it seemed like it's just been miss after miss from the Naruto franchise. Uh, Ultimate Blazing going out after only two years, I believe, with three years. Um, Shinobi Striker is the first, like, post-Ultimate Ninja Storm game. Pretty much, like, being considered a flop. Uh, Boruto taking about two years to really become relevant again after the Momoshiki, uh, fight. Uh, and I mean, it's, I, I don't I'm not, like, still a Naruto stan, but I still follow Naruto because it is one of the pillars of the community. Um, and it pretty much, pretty much being, like, passed over for, like, you know, the... Demon Slayers, Attack on Titans, the Jujutsu Kaisens, the Hero Academias, you know, of the world. Um, but it's still, like, it's a it's a giant. And sometimes you just need a kick in the pants to really revive interest. You know, maybe this isn't a long... Maybe Naruto doesn't tell on horn itself up for an opportunity. Maybe it's just a one big shot in the, in the fucking chest that it needs to really get up and realize that I'm still, you know, big dog, you know. And it still is, you know, probably... One of the two, three biggest franchises, as far as anime goes, in the Western market. Like, it's Dragon Ball, and then, you know, in certain corners, you might have, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon, or, 
you know, I, I guess Pokemon probably is bigger than Naruto and Dragon Ball, but like, it's not a. The, the problem with like Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon and Violet as an anime is that like, people don't think of them as anime and people don't consume them in such a way where it's anime first. Like, the Pokemon show is in this world almost thought of as like the dub being as exclusive as like Ash Ketchum's voice is dubbed and that's that's the big that's dub. I mean Goku is at a certain point too, but people understand that those are like Japanese products. A lot of people don't know that Pokemon and especially Pokemon but Yu-Gi-Oh as well, that those are Japanese products, you know? So it's almost like had an entirely different offshoot evolution uh from what it was in japan to where it is now you know and i, I think that even though dragon ball had clearly moved a different lane uh in the western world and has you know in uh japan where it's i mean one piece is what dragon ball is to us now one piece is the, the preeminent so to speak uh anime uh shonen anime and Demon Slayer overtook that for a little bit. But, you know, I, I think it's still top dog over here. And Naruto is still number two. That's just my opinion. Um, man, maybe that could change one day. I, it would just take... I don't know. I mean, it would, it would take a lot. But I don't think a Fortnite collab where people can... New people, new blood can kind of get into it and, you know, get an idea. Like, if they do, like... It, it looks like Shippuden is what they're going for. So a lot of the... Maybe explicit references from um, part one, maybe a little bit more subtle. Like, if they did a thousand years of death, many people would be able to get that, you know, even though it's very popular, I feel like. Um, you know, maybe they could throw in, like, the Sissy Jutsu. Like, that, I think they, well, it is a kid's game. I don't know. <laughs> they could do some deviation of the uh, Transformation Jutsu. I do they do Shadow Clones, which, you know, I think that's cool. Uh, maybe Firestar, Fireball Jutsu, I think that'd be pr pretty likely. I think it's good for Naruto. I, I do. I personally think it is. And I think collaboration is good and pure. Like, if Dragon Ball did this, A, I think Dragon Ball is held in better straits than Naruto is, especially after the Broly movie and after, you know, Super kind of went on, went off, went off, went out on a high note uh, with UI Goku and Jiren. Um, I think that, I, I know there's a lot of Dragon Ball fans that hate one that with the fucking manga, like, beating the shadow Vegeta every five seconds, but I think the casual Dragon Ball fans would eat that shit up a lot more than uh, Naruto fans seem to be doing. I don't know. Naruto fans, I think, are very bitter right now at this moment. And, you know, they kind of have the right to because people have been shitting on Naruto for five years. So <laughs> I get it. Um, that's it for me. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you all actually do give that a whirl and try to, you know, just play it. Like, I'm gonna, I downloaded Fortnite. I redownloaded re Fortnite. I haven't played Fortnite since like 2020. Um, I'll give it a whirl, you know what I mean? I want to show support to my childhood, you know, one of my childhood favorites. And, um, you know, Fortnite is a pretty... The only thing about Fortnite is that the skill gap is at that point where the skill gap is noticeable enough to where you are not when you just come in raw and expect to have much fun. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing with some, like, League of Legends. Like, I came on League of Legends, like, in 2011. I probably was decent back then. If I tried to play 9, I'd probably get fucking killed. Um... So like Overwatch, probably like a pretty similar thing. It's just a skill gap that exists when the game exists for long enough. So keep that in mind if you are going to play and you haven't played since like 2017, 2018. I tried to play 2020 and the the creating aspect is just past me. I just I wasn't good at creating in 2017. I'm not good at it now. And it's just something that like people nowadays are just your average average shooter, average person in that game is probably better at that than they are actually shooting. Like they just are going to be supremely good at creating because it's necessitated if you play that game. So keep that in mind if you go to download Fortnite and play it again after a while. But uh, that's it for me. I hope this uh, finishes recording right now. It didn't start playing. Oh, boom. No, 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 no edits. We're going to we'll post this raw. This is how much of a Muppet that I am. I used the wrong hotkey because I'm an idiot.